a little too early for a Negroni. What's up YouTube, Negroni here. Today, I wanted to share a new pickup and cover a new topic that's been on my mind. So it's 2023, a lot of excitement in the air. New watches on the horizon, maybe some new watches you wanna to add to your personal collection. I know many of you hopeful that this year will be the year that you get the call. I know I am. Now, while I'm still very excited and hopeful for the channel specifically, you know, I've got a lot of new ideas, a lot of new content coming on the way. It's shadowed by last year. It left me feeling some type of way. And I wanna share, I need to share. Now we all know it's been difficult to get desirable watches the last few years. It's frustrating for those of us who just want the watch. We just want the damn watch. Of course it's normal to feel a bit impatient at times, defeated by the games you have to play. But this last year, especially towards the end of the year, I found myself feeling a little different. I found myself feeling a little resentful and taking it a bit too personal. So there are a few watches that I've been patiently waiting for. I don't mind the weight. In fact, the weight is probably what I need to appreciate the call and allow for the funds to be available. But I never let the AD games get to me. Never took it personal or let it question myself until this year. Now, I consider myself a loyal customer, not a flipper. I actually love these watches. Shit, I spend way too many hours just thinking about, browsing, reading about these tiny mechanical things. But this past year, I began to get the sense that no matter the purchase history or relationship I could build up, I would still not be considered for some of these rare pieces or even these higher tiered brands. Now it's important to remind myself and you guys that your value is not tied to the watches that you're able to get. They're just watches. We wear the watches, they don't wear us. I think sometimes it's too easy to get caught up in everything. It's too easy to make these links in our minds because we really do love this hobby. We really do care about these watches. There's something about wearing a watch that connects us all. So it's easy to take it personal sometimes. It's easy to connect the watches that you're able to obtain to your level of enthusiasm. But those things have nothing to do with each other. Some things are out of our control and you just have to worry about what you can control. I can control my visits. I can control my spending history. I can continue going in, being a good person, being a decent person. And I can control my love and enthusiasm for the hobby and express it in different ways. After that, it is what it is. But this feeling did bother me. It doesn't feel great that there are amazing watches out there and you finally made it in life. You know, you got a little coin and you want to experience these little wonders. You've been participating in the games. You've done so gladly because that's how much you want the watches. We just want the damn watch. But even still, you know there are some calls you'll never get. Some lists you can't even get on and you can't help but let that sink in a little bit. I mean, the other day I had decided, I had decided it was time to pursue my dream of owning a Patek. I had researched and fallen in love with the idea of buying and owning a simple three-hand Patek Aquanaut 5167A. It fits my lifestyle, it's sporty, it's elegant, it's a beautiful everyday piece that elevates the rest of my collection and it's a great introduction to the brand. I knew I would have to make an introduction I would have to create spending history and overall just be patient. I made a few visits and I won't say where, but I was basically told by someone who used to work there that, that authorized dealer is owned and operated by a certain demographic that takes care of their clients that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars that still haven't gotten an Aquanaut or Nautilus. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the honesty. But damn, that doesn't feel great. So with that feeling, coupled with zero missed calls, Oh, Are you fucking serious? Fucking motherfuckers! What does a fucking guy gotta do to get a Daytona? 
I still had an itch to purchase a new watch, but I chose a little restraint. Rather than filling that void with just any new watch, because there are a lot of new watches that I would love to buy, instead I purchased something that would be just left of the hobby. Something that would be somewhat of a distraction from the watch craze, while at the same time help me express my love for the watches that I already have. So let me show you what I got. Here is the now infamous Leica Q2. It is a completely unnecessary point and shoot fixed lens camera. And I fucking love it. Now, I don't claim to be a photographer, but it has always been something that I've dabbled in. I actually prefer pictures much more than videos. To me, photos capture and convey a feeling in time much better than a video can. It's that saying, less is more. So why this camera? Why the Leica? If you don't know much about the brand, they're, uh, they're a lot like Rolex. They are the Rolex of cameras. Let's take, a, let's take a Rolex Daytona, for example. Pretty simple watch, fairly simple movement, beautiful design, robust construction, However, there are countless other sport chronographs on the market that spec for spec would hold their own or even demolish the Daytona. But yet, the Rolex is more desirable and it's the one that most of us would choose. Well, that's the Leica. The Leica is the Rolex Daytona, while every other camera in its class, with better specs, more resolution, well, those are every other camera manufacturer. I want the Rolex and I want the Leica. It's more than just the specs or value for money because I'd argue when it comes to luxury items like watches or cameras it's more about how the product makes you feel when you're using it it's the impeccable designs that you know will always look amazing long after you're gone that's what i love about the watches and that's why i love this camera i mean it also takes great photos so this isn't a camera or tech channel per se so i'll briefly talk about how like a q2 inspires me to take more photos to practice photography a little more. When you flip through Instagram, you'll find amazing watch photography in this space. The setups are so impressive, lights everywhere, these huge camera bodies with very expensive lenses. And on the other side of the spectrum, there are photos taken with just a cell phone. I knew I wanted to take more pictures, but the idea of lugging around different lenses everywhere just wasn't appealing. However, I also don't enjoy using my phone as a camera. I mean, I'm on this thing all day already. I want this outlet to be its own thing. 
but in a simple setup that would inspire me to shoot more. And that's where you'll eventually get to the Q2. It's a beautiful camera with the perfect mix of old world tactile photography like a bezel on a Submariner, but it still retains all the modern goodies. The camera body is made of a solid block of magnesium alloy. It is a joy to behold and handle, and the luxurious feel only elevates the experience. With a 28mm 1.7 fixed lens, it's a great lens to be stuck with. It's wide enough for all your candid holiday shots, street photography, and with my favorite feature, the macro mode, it's every watch lover's dream. It's not a tiny camera, but it's not cumbersome. You know you have something of quality, but something that can take a beating. Sounds a lot like a Rolex. It should be a nice little distraction while I wait for the next watch. A nice little hobby, but a hobby that, you know, kind of goes along with watch collecting, YouTubing, YouTubing. It'll help elevate my content. This also gives me a chance to reflect on what the watches really mean to me. I think it can sometimes be an unhealthy obsession. So taking a step back after this purchase, after making this video, it's helped me realize why I felt the way I did. It's helped me to compartmentalize Christopher Negroni from the watches. I'm very happy with this purchase and I'm looking forward to learning how to shoot more on this camera, sharing content, more wrist shots, more, more watch photography. So go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram, Christopher Negroni. That's where I'll try and post all my wrist shots I'll be taking with this camera. You can also see my daily Rolex Daytona Panda posts. Hashtag Panda a day until I get the call. You can also track the amount of grays I get in my hairs as the months and years go by. I might have to, I might have to just bite the bullet and buy it already. <laughs> see, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it already. I'm already obsessed about the watches. I need to just go take some photos and you can go outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm just gonna go outside and take some photos, take my mind off of the in Daytona. It didn't work, it didn't work. I lied to you guys. It didn't work. It distracted me for like five minutes. Thank you to all you guys who stuck around and watched to the end. I know it's a little bit different of a video from my normal content, even though my content's not very normal. Till next time, Negroni out.